Alchemy. It's not going to be a part of this video. Nope. Unlike the last six videos I have done on Soulsborne lore, I will not be making any references to alchemy, or psychoanalysis, or creation myths in this video. Today, I will be doing some old-fashioned lore analysis. Don't worry though, I will be providing an original take as I always do, one that I know will be worth your while. I know that might be hard to believe, especially when it comes to a character like Velka. If you know anything about Velka, you know that there are more theories surrounding her than there were surrounding the JFK assassination. There are several reasons for this. Her presence is felt almost everywhere, yet we don't really know why. The item descriptions refer to her exploits, but they are too vague to fully explain the life she led. As a result, theorists have done everything they can to try and fill in the blanks. Though progress has certainly been made, nothing has been confirmed. Today, I would like to try and push the conversation forward, so we can get closer to a canonical view of who Velka is. Though I won't be able to confirm anything, I will try to provide the most compelling and logical view possible. I will do this by presenting the information about Velka that we know for sure. Then. I will present the best theories that I have come across regarding Velka's true identity. And, to conclude, I will try to validate those theories by presenting my own, unique take on who Velka really is. Finally, before I begin, it will make some of you happy to know that many of the theories I will be trying to validate will be from a fellow YouTube theorist, a Dark Souls aficionado named The Ashen Hollow. If you're worried about the quality of my original take, do not worry. I passed it by the Ashen Hollow over Discord, and he believes there is merit to it. With that introduction out of the way, let's get down to business. We'll begin by looking at various item descriptions. Aside from dialogue one can have with characters like Oswald of Karim, the item descriptions are the most reliable source of information we can find in regards to Velka. According to the Vow of Silence miracle, Velka is a rogue deity but is considered to have a great range of influence even as gods are concerned. This influence can, at least in part, be attributed to her status as the quote-unquote goddess of sin. As stated in the description for the Karmic Justice Miracle, it is Velka's duty to dole out the appropriate punishment to every sin. She keeps the names of the guilty in the appropriately titled Book of the Guilty. This book primarily contains the names of those who have disrespected the gods or their covenants. We'll discuss Velka's role in carrying out those punishments in a moment. Velka is heavily associated with crows. This can be inferred from the statue one can find of her in the painted world of Ariamis, and the various crows and crow demons that one can find in that level. The director of the Dark Souls games, Hidetaka Miyazaki, once said in an interview that the crow demons were originally designed as worshippers of the goddess Velka, whose bodies were warped by their devotion. Finally, it seems that Velka and her followers were profoundly talented swordsmen, if the description of her rapier is anything to go by. Quote, The pardoner is an inhuman swordsman, and wields this enchanted blade with special sword technique. That's all we know for sure about Velka and her followers, but there are many other things one can reasonably infer from other item descriptions. One of those things is her involvement in an occult rebellion against the gods, a rebellion that is referenced by the description for the Effigy Shield. Though her role in the rebellion isn't expressly stated, there is good reason to believe she was involved. Given her status as the Goddess of Sin, it is believed that this occult rebellion centered around holding Lord Gwyn to account for committing the quote-unquote first sin. In case you somehow don't know, the first sin was committed when Gwyn went against the laws of nature by prolonging the Age of Fire, so that the Age of Dark, also known as the Age of Man, would never arrive. Because Gwyn was of such a high status in the world of Lordran, having him answer to his crimes would involve devastating theological and political consequences, so the war between the gods and devotees of Velka would commence. It seems that Velka's base of operations was in New Londo, given the presence of her Painted World statue in that area, and nowhere else in the game. Plus, the name New Londo suggests a breaking away from Anor Londo and all that it represented, namely Gwyn and the First Sin. 
Because Valka seemed interested in maintaining the cycle between Ages of Fire and Dark, those who were associated with the Dark joined with her in this rebellion. As I said before, those associated with the Dark were humans, a fact that we know to be true given that the original Dark Soul laid in the hands of humanity's ancestor, the furtive pygmy. One last thing that we can infer is that Velka's relationship with the gods wasn't always tumultuous. It seemed like, at one point, their relationship was favorable. The item description for the aforementioned Book of the Guilty supports this point of view. Let's reread it, shall we? The goddess of sin Velka oversees this list of the guilty, who have disrespected the gods or their covenants, and shall one day face the wrath of the Blades of the Dark Moon. This description might seem contradictory at first, because as we know, Gwendolyn, the child of Gwyn, was the head of the Blades of the Dark Moon. Also, the player character increases their standing within the Blades of the Dark Moon Covenant by giving Gwendolyn souvenirs of reprisal, souvenirs which drop after killing Velka's followers in the painted world of Ariamis. So, why would Gwendolyn reward the player for killing Velka's followers if the Book of the Guilty suggests that Velka once worked for the Blades of the Dark Moon. I can only conclude that this is due to Velka once being favorable in the eyes of Gwyn and Gwendolyn, only for her to go quote-unquote rogue and fall out of favor. In my opinion, this falling out of favor can be attributed to Velka trying to hold Gwyn accountable for his committing of the first sin. Thus, Gwendolyn turned on Velka because she turned on their father. That is all the information we know for sure, and the information we can infer. Before I get to my original perspective on who Velka truly is, I'd like to reference the theories of the Ashen Hollow. He has had many theories on who Velka is. Almost all are worth your time, but I won't be addressing all of them. I will only be focusing on the ones that I believe make the most sense, given the evidence he provides as well as how they work in conjunction with my perspective. The best theory that Ashen Hollow has regarding Velka is that she is associated with the Sable Church of Londor in Dark Souls 3. Ashen Hollow's evidence for this is as follows. The Vow of Silence, the miracle which originated with Velka in the first game, is a miracle used exclusively by the Sable Church of Londor in the third game. The Vow of Silence description also states that members of the church were all trained swordsmen, a skill that Velka and her followers possessed in the first game. Also, Ashen Hollow draws a connection between the three sisters who founded the Sable Church and an item that Velka helped create from the first game. This item is the Rare Ring of Sacrifice. If you look closely at the ring, you can see three silhouettes. Finally, like Velka, the three sisters of the church, Alfreda, Uria, and Lilian, were all devoted to mankind and ending the Age of Fire. The evidence for this lies in a few places. One of them is in the item description for Uria's Ashes. Another is with the Usurpation of Fire ending in Dark Souls 3, where the Ashen One usurps the fire for humanity, and the sisters Uria and Lilian bow to you, or at least who we suspect to be Uria and Lilian. Also, one can infer the continuation of Velka's mission with the name Londor. If New Londo was a new city meant to counter Gwyn's demiurgic actions, then the name Londor could represent the continuation of Velka's efforts. That is what I believe to be the Ashen Hollow's best theory, and it is one that I would like to further validate by putting forward an original take, one that I've never seen anybody else mention. This theory of mine rests on some of the things we learned from Dark Souls 2. Follow me here. As we know, in Dark Souls 1, there are four Lord Souls, this pattern of four carries over to Dark Souls 2 with the souls of the four old ones. What some of you may not know is that if you start a new game plus with Dark Souls 2, these four old ones reward the player with four different souls. Respectively, they are the old witch soul, the old king soul, the old dead one soul, and the old pale drake soul. These new game plus souls are references to Gwyn, the witch of Izalith, Gravelord Nido, and Seath the Scaleless from Dark Souls 1. Three Lord Souls plus a Lord Soul Shard. 
As we know, the fourth Lord Soul of the Furtive Pygmy, also known as Manus, isn't obtainable. This is because, upon Manus's death, it transformed into the four sister queens in Dark Souls 2. Those are Nishandra, Nadalia, Balana, and Alsana. There's a reason I bring all this up. I don't think the inclusion of the four Lord Souls in Dark Souls 2's New Game Plus was an easter egg, or a simple wink and a nod to the events of the first game. Rather, I think it offers a clue. As we know, one of the core themes of the Dark Souls games is the cyclical nature of life and how all living things are bound to it. To go against this cyclical pattern is unnatural, but this isn't the only pattern that I recognize across the three games. There are other patterns that repeat, just in different forms. One of those patterns is the number four, four Lord Souls, four Old Souls, four Children of Gwyn, four Sisters. But I'm not talking about the four sisters in Dark Souls 2. I'm talking about Elfrida, Yuria, Lilianne, and Velka. Just as the four sisters in Dark Souls 2 work on behalf of the Dark, so do the four sisters in Dark Souls 1 and 3. There are reasons to believe that this is a purposeful pattern. Just as Nishandra tried to usurp power away from Vendrick in Dark Souls 2, Velka and her followers tried to usurp power prior to Dark Souls 1, and the three sisters of the Sable Church tried to usurp the fire in Dark Souls 3. Sister Elfrida, or Sister Frida, was an ashen one in Dark Souls 3. And Nadalia was also made of ash in Dark Souls 2. And regardless of their intention, the remaining sisters across the three games drew power away from others on account of their dark nature. This would work well alongside one of the Ashen Hollow's other speculations, that Velka was related to the furtive pygmy. Maybe, to contrast against Gwyn's four light children, Manus bore four dark children to correct the balance. It would also work harmoniously alongside another theory, that at one point, Velka was Gwyn's wife, just like Nishandra was Vendrick's wife. Not only that, it might also explain who the child standing beside Velka is in her statues. The Ashen Hollow speculates that she might be Filianor, the daughter of Gwyn, whom we find in the Ringed City. Ashen Hollow provides many reasons to believe this in his video on Filianor, but I'll provide my own here. The colors of white and black are seen not just in the egg that Filianor holds, but in her hair and her dress. This suggests to me a union of Gwyn's white nature and Velka's dark abyssal nature. Just as the weapon of Eluum Lois represented the white nature of the Ivory King and the dark nature of Queen Alsana, the egg that Filianor carries represents Filianor's nature. White and godly on the outside, like Gwyn, but dark and human on the inside, like her mother Velka. Am I and the Ashen Hollow off base here, or do you agree with our theories? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. It's simple, takes less than a second to do, and helps me out more than you know. If you have thoughts of your own regarding who Velka is, put them in the comment section below. I believe I read everything about her, but it's certainly possible that I missed something. Until my next video, just remember, as always, to stay yellow.